what is going on guys? We will you to be here back with another video and welcome to the second episode of what I like to call rules of the game. Today we are going to be talking about effect types and timing. So as we all know there are various types of monster effects in Yu-Gi-Oh! Most of us know these only intuitively whereas I believe it is much better to have a single set of terminologies by which one can define them and a certain set of texts uh, on cards by which one can define them as well. That way there is never any ambiguity as to what effect in fact is. So the effects are ignition, trigger, continuous and quick, either single or multi-trigger depending on what effect. I'll be talking about that soon. So a diagram will look something like this. I'm not going to go over it in too much detail however, uh, I'm going to get straight into the effects. So uh, you can take a look at this diagram for a minute and then um, move on to the next section. Okay, so first we have the ignition effect. This is perhaps the most common type. As the name suggests, the ignition effect is one which is ignited or initiated by the turn player. In my last video, I discussed fast effect timing and priority, and it's precisely the priority of the turn player to activate this type of effect on normal summon, which was removed from the TCG. So remember that these effects are always placed on chaining one, since all other chainable events have to resolve before they can activate their effects. This includes the chainable event which could possibly arise in response to their own summon. So common examples include Chaos Sorcerer, Card Card D, Red Ice Darkness Metal Dragon, Wind Up Hunter, Card Trooper, at least his milling effect, uh, Wind Up Carriers and Mighty, and Judgment Dragon. So there are two card texts by which you can identify this effect. Uh, they are You Can, which implies more than once per turn, an example of that would be Judgment Dragon, and also once per turn you can da da da. Uh, an example of that would be Red Ice Darkness Metal Dragon, Insector Dragonfly, Chaos Sorcerer, and Card Trooper. These effects can also have costs, but remember that all costs must be paid for these effects. Even if the effect's activation is negated, the cost to attempt the activation is still paid, and it is always paid. That is something that people seem to forget about sometimes. That is why it is always a better idea to drop effect failure on the activation of a monster's effect that has a cost, rather than on the summon, except in the case of Rescue Rabbit and Nonfire Blossom, who remove themselves from the field as their own costs, and so effect failure, uh, its effect is paid. So a summary would look something like this. They must always be placed on chain link 1 and initiated by the turn player. Uh, all chain events must resolve before they can activate. All costs must be paid. And monsters with these effects must remain face up on the field for their effects to resolve. Something to note before I move on is that uh, you cannot mix up ignition effects with summoning conditions. White Pulsar's effect, for example, says you can special summon this card from your hand, yada yada yada. The you can would make you think that it's an ignition effect, but it's actually a summoning condition. And for that reason, you cannot respond to it in any kind of chainable way. You cannot respond passively to a Cyber Dragon's ability to special summon itself from the hand if your opponent controls a monster and you don't, but it's just something to keep an eye out for. Also, alongside summoning conditions, summoning restrictions can't be negated or veiled, so I'd be careful about that. For example, Scrap Chimera's only being able to sink into a Scrap Monster cannot be negated. But let's move on, shall we? So next of all we have trigger effects. As the name suggests, these effects are triggered or set off by an action either by you or your opponent. Uh, for that reason, they are usually placed on chaining 1 or 2, depending on the situation. Uh, and unlike ignition effects, these can activate in various locations, not just on the field. They can activate in the hand, field, graveyard, or banished zone, depending on the card. So typical examples include Battle Fader, Gachi Gachi Gantetsu, all Heratic Dragon Monsters, Light Pulsar Dragon, Reborn Tenku, and one of everyone's personal favourites, Tour Guide from the Underworld. So these effects can be identified by two simple words, when and if. If either of these appear at the beginning of the text of a card effect, then they are trigger effects. When this card is normal summoned. When this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle. Uh, if this card would be destroyed. If this card in your graveyard is banished, etc. Another feature of trigger effects is that they can respond both to chainable and non-chainable events. Naturia Cosmo Beat, for example, can respond to the setting of a monster, which is a passive event and typically isn't chainable. The same goes for the newly released Blood Mephist, who, when your opponent sets a spell or trap card, can inflict 300 damage to them. Again, an event which isn't chainable. So, as everyone knows, there are both optional and mandatory effects in the Yu-Gi-Oh! training card game. Optional effects typically beginning with you can, although this isn't the case for ignition effects, which are always placed on chaining one, as I've said, and mandatory effects such as Sangin, which as soon as their conditions are met, they simply resolve. So, in most cases, timing is not an issue. Essentially, the turn player's effects always resolve first if there are simultaneous activations, unless the opponent has a mandatory effect and the turn player has an optional one, e.g. at the bottom, as I said there, for mandatory mandatory, mandatory optional, and optional optional, the turn player's effect uh, activates first. Timing is typically an issue when an effect with two parts interrupts an optional effect with only a single part in the same chain link. 
Let's say I flip on my Raikou and decide to destroy my opponent's face-up Gear Town. Gear Town specifically states that when this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one ancient gear monster from your hand to your graveyard. The issue for Gear Town, however, is that Raikou's second effect, the milling, still has to resolve. And by the time it does, Gear Town misses its timing. Some people are under the impression that all parts of an effect such as Raikou's resolve together before other cards in the chain link do. This is simply not the case. Each effect resolves in turn as it occurs, but the chain links are preserved. So Gear Town misses timing because Raikou still needs to mill. But when would Gear Town not miss timing? Well, the rule is as follows. If an effect is the last thing to happen in a chain link, it does not miss timing. If Gear Town's destruction was the last thing to happen, for example, as a result of a mystical space typhoon, it will resolve as normal. Another common example nowadays is Light Pulsar Dragon versus Soul Taker. Again, Light Pulsar Dragon misses timing because it's being sent from the field to the graveyard is not the last thing to happen. When your opponent activates Soul Taker, you still need to gain a thousand life points even after the monster has been destroyed. So just remember that rule and you'll basically be fine. So a summary would look something like this. Triggered by an action by either you or your opponent, the effect can be optional or mandatory, can activate in response to both chainable and non-chainable events. If optional, the effect can miss timing if an effect with several parts is still resolving. Activations can be on the field, the hand, the graveyard, or the banished pile. And the effects are typically recognisable by the words when or if. Next we have continuous effects, the more boring of the lot. Uh, basically, as soon as a monster is facing on the field that has a continuous effect, the effect is continuously active, as the name suggests. Secondly, it doesn't participate in any chain links whatsoever. Since it is active already, it precedes any activations. Examples include cards which benefit the monster itself, such as Spirit Reaper, cards which boost attack points, such as the Shining, and cards which restrict your opponent, such as Kawaki Marujago, King Tiger Wangu, and Archlord Christia. There's not really much else to say about these effects. As long as the monster remains face up on the field, the effect remains continuously active. If Skill Drain is activated, obviously the effect is negated, and you could kill, say, a Spirit Reaper while in face of defense position. A simple case of how they don't participate in chain links is that if I have a face of King Tiger Wangu on the field, my opponent summons a rescue rabbit, King Tiger Wangu is already face up, therefore its effect is continuously active, and as soon as the rabbit hits the field, King Tiger Wangu's effect kicks in, and the rabbit dies. Just remember that in general for continuous effects, it's only to do with continuous effect outspeeding any other effects, it's simply that they were already face up in the field and active when another card comes into play. Moving swiftly on. And finally we have quick effects, uh, as the name suggests, they are the quickest of all of the effects since they are treated as spell speed 2, and they can be activated in response to any chainable or non-chainable event in any phase, unless otherwise specified, such as effect failure for example, who can only be activated during your opponent's main phase. Common examples include the aforementioned effect failure, as well as other hand traps such as DD Crow, Maxi, also Wind Up Rabbit, and the likes of Six Samurai Nishi. The card text, which identifies this effect, uh, can be divided into three. The first is during either player's turn, which means that it's not ignition and by definition quick, in this case multi trigger. Secondly, we have once per turn, when dot 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 you can. In this case, it's quick and single trigger, since it can only be activated once. And thirdly, is you can. So the summary of trigger points goes as follows, a single trigger effect always says once per turn, and a multi-trigger effect can be activated during your opponent's turn, during more than one phase, at any point in the chain, and, and hence has multiple trigger points. Since if someone summons a monster against my Anishi, if someone summons a monster against my Wind of Rabbit, declares an attack, activates a card, whatever, whether it's chainable or non-chainable, I can activate those effects, I can banish that rabbit, I can bounce that card back to the hand. So in a sense, quick effects are the best of the lot, since they can respond at any time to any chainable or non-chainable event, and they have very few restrictions as to when they can be activated, effect failure being the only example I can think of. Alright guys, I'm going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching, as always. Be sure to comment, rate, and subscribe as usual. Uh, I am Weeble YugiTuber. Be sure to let me know if you like this series, any other videos you want to see in the series. Thank you very much, guys. I am signing out. Peace.